In this unit of module 7 on meeting skills, we will move on to how to speak effectively in meetings, irrespective of whether you are leading a meeting or you are just contributing to a meeting as a participant, you need to speak up. I am going to talk about three things in this lecture. I am going to begin with addressing the problem of speaking at all. Some of us do not speak up in meetings. That is the first issue. In the second part, I would look at how to make an executive presence in a meeting. And in the third part, we will look at how to use your voice delivery and certain kind of phrases, certain kind of languages which is appropriate in a meeting. So, let us begin with finding out what kind of meeting participant are you. Are you one of those people who never speaks up in meetings? Do not worry, I am one of them because I rarely speak in meetings. Uh, well, you can not speak in meetings if you do not want to speak and lot of interpreted people do not speak up in meetings, but you have to be prepared for the impression you create among others uh, if you do not speak up. So, uh, we have somebody giving, uh, tell, giving us three strategies for introverts for speaking up in meetings. Let us look at these three strategies. The first strategy is, uh, why do you, why do not you speak up? What is the problem? We need to find out that. What is the reason that some of us do not speak up? The most common reason is that if you are in a not so senior position, if you are a new entrant and if you have been called to a meeting for the first time, uh, you are probably not senior enough. Now, how do you, uh, wh why do you think you should not contribute? Why do not you speak up? Because you feel I want to be respectful and this is very true in Asian cultures where we think we tend to be deferential towards our seniors. We leave them to do all the speaking and we keep quiet ourselves. So, if you do not speak up, because you think you need to be respectful towards others, to be respectful towards your seniors, uh, you have to be prepared that what you, your intention and the effect might mismatch. If your intention when you think like this is that your natural tendency is to defer to someone who is more senior to you and to soak in the conversation especially if you are naturally introverted, it may feel, oh, it is not my place to talk. Now, this deferential inclination can be especially strong in organizations with strong hierarchies or in cultures where we defer to our seniors. But what is the unintended impact of this? Your deference causes you to become invisible in the meetings and believe me, it happens to me very often because uh, I am hesitant to speak out, speak up in meetings and I find that no one if has even noticed that I am around. So, when no one knows you, they do not know what to do, what, what you can do. Uh, I was, uh, and many of us have very, uh, we, have, we are very capable, we are competent people, but it is all there on our CVs. So, we assume that since it is on our CVs, since people who know us know about our abilities are also aware of what we are or we are not capable of doing. But believe me, it is not as simple because people go by what they observe, what they see. And I have been shocked to find, I have been quite pleasantly or unpleasantly surprised to find that somebody who is not quite as competent as me has been um, uh, given a certain uh, responsibility or a job. Uh, it might happen to you also because that person comes across as very knowledgeable. Even if that person is not knowledgeable, that person, uh, I say this because people have told me later that so and so comes across has a very uh, comes across as a very knowledgeable person. And I have been uh, told again that until, oh, we did not know you had done all these things because uh, you do not talk about it. So, 
you need to talk about it. You don't need to tom tom your achievements, but you need to say what you're capable of doing. And some people who have mastered this art, you will find that even if they are introverted, I'm giving real life examples to you. I know people who are really introverted and who normally don't speak, but I find that the same people when they, ha they know, they observe or when they think that a lot is at stake, I find the same people whenever there is a person in authority who's going to take notice of them, the same people muster their courage to speak up at such meetings. So, we need to learn from such people and to speak up because unless you tell people what, unless you speak up, how are people who are strangers to know what you are capable of? That means, you are not as likely to be considered when you, when it comes time for a promotion. And if you speak up in meetings after a certain, after you reach a certain level, the number of senior executives who know you and have a good impression of you will directly correlate with your career success because they've heard you and they, I've heard people saying, oh, I've, I've heard so and so speak up at meetings and so and so comes across as very knowledgeable. Now, we move on to the second reason why people don't speak up. The second reason why people do not speak up and you are not alone is they do not, I do not want to say the wrong thing because you are afraid. You feel that you might say something which is wrong and it might have a negative impact on uh, how people perceive you. You do not want to appear incompetent. You open your mouth and you find that maybe you said the wrong thing or you are afraid you said the wrong thing. You do not want to appear incompetent in front of other people, particularly uh, uh, in front of people who are going to judge you and have a say in your career. If you are with a client, you might not want to jeopardize the, the deal or damage the relationship. And you think, oh, why do not most senior people speak after all? Uh, and they are there in, for the first place. But what happens? What is the unintended effect? your client sees you as a scribe or an assistant and you never build a re working relationship, you need to go to the next level. So, uh, you are always seen as someone who is just around to take notes. For internal meetings, your boss thinks you do not have a mind of your own and sees you more of an order taker than an influencer. The third reason why we pe people do not speak up is they feel, I have nothing to add. Everyone else has said what they needed to say. Now, everything that needs, needs to be said has already been shared. You hate it when others waste time repeating the same things and you don't want to be the same kind of person. So, if you are a good listener, unusually let others speak first or if you are with a team with a domin few dominant personalities, you will most likely fall into this category. Now, what is the unintentional effect of this? The unintentional effect is, imagine you try to th see yourself and believe me, I tried doing this because uh, you assume that everyone in the room or everyone in a meeting knows you and you already have a reputation in your organization. People know you, who you are. But then I realize, oh, most of the people who are around me, they are newcomers. They have no idea about what, uh, what I know or what I have done. So, these newcomers are going to assume quite reasonably that you do not have any idea so long as you do not share them. Worse, you might be seen as someone who does not care. Neither one of these perceptions, misperceptions will help you in your career and it is up to you to set them right. So, remember this is the impression you create if you do not speak up in meetings and what must you do? Uh, if you are afraid of speaking up at meetings, remember there is nothing like preparation. Preparation is the key. If you know what is going to be covered, you can prepare what you need to say or get the necessary information from the other participants. Will there be questions for you? Can you deliver the answers? Is there any other business that you want to raise? It often helps to make some notes for what you want to say at the meeting. So, if you are prepared, you can have a say. When you know the points you want to raise or the comments you want to make from the agenda, you can prepare in advance for what you are going to say 
so that you can say it in the clearest, most concise way possible. Then when the chair asks you for your comments, you will feel more confident. What else can you do? Prepare what you need, practice a lot, observe your appearance and posture and we are going to show you so, some role plays. We are going to show you some short videos on how to prepare for a meeting, how do you dress for a meeting, how do you observe your appearance and posture. Arrive early at the meeting place. Meet other people. Speak with other meeting attendees. Speak louder, clearly and make eye contact. Make hand gestures. Now we come to the positioning. Remember meetings are also all about power. It begins with where you sit, who you sit with, which is the most important position. Now, it is important for you to position yourself well, particularly if you are not very fluent in English, make sure you sit in a position where you can see by and be seen by the chair and other participants. When others speak, look at them. Understanding is far harder if you can't see the person while they speak. And I notice this happening in the meetings and it goes together with arriving early. People who understand the importance of positioning oneself, they always come early and occupy the most advantage, uh, the best position, the best vantage point. Uh, it's all got to do with uh, uh, align yourself with people who are on authority or align yourself with your friends. So, depending on where you sit, if you sit closest to the person who is in authority, you will have his ear, you will have his ear or her ear and also they will be able to notice you. You might have your friend sitting next to you and if you want to make yourself invisible. Many of us find ourselves taking a corner seat or sit in a position where you won't be noticed. So, we are uh, putting ourselves at a disadvantage because uh, no one is going to notice us. That means, we are not going to speak up and our presence is not like a, is like an absence. Now, I move on to the next important point which is how to appear poised, how to make an executive presence and this is an advice given by Ashley Cobert, who is a PR person in an article called the it factor, the executive making an executive presence in a meeting. So, what is her advice? The first advice is be polished, poised and prepared. Have you ever come across people like uh, uh, who uh, I have come across such individuals, even if they are harried, they are rushing from meeting to meeting, they never let other people see them sweat. So, a person with an executive presence is not harried running from meeting to meeting, she is not flustered when she speaks, she is the seems like the person who even in the middle, wake of a crisis in the middle of night could still show up looking put together. So, be polished, be poised. That is the next part. How do you achieve this type of voice, even if you are running from meeting to meeting? First, before entering the meeting, entering a room, always take a quick second to compose yourself, take a deep breath, smooth your hair and slow down. How to be prepared? More importantly, as I said right at the beginning, that is more than being poised and polished it is more important to be prepared. If you are, if you uh, spend some extra time beforehand to prepare yourself for anything, think of the questions the boss might ask you. Think and prepare a well thought out response, which will prevent you from having to scramble through your notes or to blurt out, I do not know, be calm, collected and the person with all the answers or you, and you will be seen as a leader. Now, the next thing in order to have a, an executive presence in a meeting is to mind your body language and we will show you how to do this later in a video. In your next meeting, find look around and note how everyone is sitting. You would find that typically shy or unconfident people will close off and make themselves small by crossing their legs and arms. Imagine a hunched over Steve Jobs avoiding looking at you, 
would that seem impressive not so much and um, people with executive presence demand more control over the room so stand or sit tall look engaged by leaning slightly forward and take up space by putting your arms on the table not huddling them to your body also make sure to make eye contact with everyone around you everyone in the room which is not only personable it portrays confidence though don't overdo it you still need to do to blink I don't be like me don't blink all the time but beg your pardon I'm blinking because I have a problem with the light and I keep blinking uh, the body now professor Dale Delitus has uh, spoken about the body triptych when he talks about body language of meetings and he addresses uh, three as uh, three parts of the body one is the feet the lower body and uh, it talks about different positions people take up when they are at a meeting notice your own position some people tend to put it on the legs of one's chair uh, another group of people puts it in the air after crossing one's legs the third rests resting on the tips of the toes while one crosses one's ankles or tucked under the torso on the chair so which position do you take up or uh, what about your torso these are the various positions people take up during the meeting leaning back in one's chair hunched over with hands under the desk hunched over scribbling notes slouching crossing arms shifting around so each of these says something for about you if you lean back in your chair it shows I'm very relaxed and not engaged if you're hunched I'm secretly text messaging if you're hunched over scribbling notes I'm not paying attention to what I'm saying slouching nothing to contribute and I'm wasting my time by being here crossed arms I hate this meeting and all of you making me attend shifting around I'm unable to sit and I've had too much caffeine today so this is your uh, second part of the trip chit, your torso and the third is your hands where do you place your hands uh, hands should rest on the desk empty of any utensils if one must make notes pick up a writing implement and note the thought quietly then set the paper pen or pencil down again it's quite usual for one to pick up a pen or chew on it after taking a brief, brief note which creates a very bad impression or to hold a click pen which I tend to do and I suddenly notice myself doing it if it's particularly a very boring meeting the urge to click the nib in and out of the barrel can be irresistible to many do everyone a favor and avoid these annoying traits now let's come to speaking proper speak up you've heard it before to be taken seriously in a meeting speak clearly loudly enough so that people can hear you and avoid trailing off at the end of a sentence or using fluffy language like I hope to have this done or I think it will get results speak up and also don't afra be afraid of silence so many people will ramble just to fill silence which can lead to less than intelligent sounding statements you want to leave others hanging on to every word not trying to stay awake while they glance at the clock and wonder when you will finish the third aspect is to make people other people feel special as Maya Angelou the writer said people will forget what you said people will forget what you did but people will not forget how you made them feel so one of the best ways to make an executive presence is to make everyone feel special make everyone around you feel that he or she is the only person in the room so don't hog the conversation respond to what you heard ask questions to show that you're paying attention the more you listen to people the more they listen to you when it comes to executive presence remember actions speak louder so take the time to think through what you've said and through practice you will master the skills and people will want to listen to you the third aspect is now to address the entire group be concise I'm summarizing use your space wisely and be positive in order to make an executive presence now we come to the final part which is how to speak 
the delivery part proper and the kind of language you use as a meeting. Now, remember uh, the rules that we shared with you about how to use your voice or how to use delivery in general they apply to meetings as well. You find yourself whenever you attend a meeting and I have had this happening to me that suddenly I find that someone speaks up in a meeting. It is not what they are saying, but some of us have a very powerful voice or some of us have a very way, way, uh, good way of delivering which makes people sit up and notice. And I have had people tell me that so and so, this colleague of yours, whenever he speaks in a senate meeting, uh, he makes an impact because of the way he delivered. Now, this colleague of mine uh, was a very, uh, uh, was a, a person who taught speaking skills and who ha himself had a very good way, very, ve uh, very uh, powerful way of uh, delivering uh, not just a speech, but even in ordinary conversation, the way he would choose his words, the way he would an enunciate each and every phrase, it would make an impact. But I would I observed him do it how in a meeting, how he would modulate his voice, raise his voice appropriately. When he was angry, he would raise his voice or his voice would reduce to a whisper if he was angry. So, how he would play around his, with his voice to uh, add an impact to the message or to the statement he was making. So, you can do that, enunciate, speak slowly, expand your vocabulary, do not disqualify yourself at the end of a sentence. Now, what are the things you can do to improve your vocabulary? Use some emergency phrases. There are certain phrases one needs to one uses in meetings and if one is familiar with these phrases, one can speak up, one can contradict others, one can uh, wait for an opening, one can button only if one is able to use the appropriate phrase for making an intervention. So, let us look at some of these phrases before we close. Uh, if you do not understand someone or need clarification, you could ask, sorry, could you repeat that point about please? Sorry, but could you outline the main points again? If you really want to clarify what someone has said and you do not want to uh, you do not want to mishear what misunderstand what they are saying, you are within your rights to say, I am not sure I understood, I follow your point about just to make sure I understand when you say you are talking about is that right. So, these are emergency phrases you can use to uh, speak in a meeting. Now, uh, use some of these phrases to make sure you are inter in interrupted halfway through. I am sure this has happened to you, it has happened to all of us where we are speaking and someone else who cannot wait for us to finish either because they want to cut us off either because they have a more exciting idea or because they feel that you, you have an idea which everyone will listen to, they do not allow you to have a say. So, you can politely tell them actually if you could just let me finish, actually I have really finished. This is one way of making sure that you are not interrupted. What are the phases you can use for contributing? If you have got something to say, you can introduce one of these phrases. I would like to come in here if I may. So, you can seek permission if I may. I would like to come in here, if I may say something, there is something I would like to add to the discussion. Can I raise a point here actually while we are on the subject? So, these are some of the phrases you can use for contributing. And uh, finally, you can ask for a summary. If the meeting gets involved in off topic matters or the participants spend a lot of time joking or in very technical discussions. Make sure the chair is managing the discussion by asking for a summary. You can use a phrase like, can you summarize the main points for me please? So, what would you say are the main actionable points here? So, with this we look at how you can speak effectively in meetings.
whatever level in the hierarchy, in the corporate ladder or wherever you work, in your organization you are, you can speak effectively, effectively irrespective of whether you are leading a meeting or you are mainly one of the speakers at a meeting. To summarize what we have discussed today, first we looked at how to get over your fears and speak up in a meeting, particularly if you are an introvert. The second aspect that we looked at as was how to make an executive presence in a meeting so that people notice you and you make a good impression. And the third part we looked at was what kind of expressions, how do you use language, voice and delivery to make an impact at a meeting. Uh, you will we'll, uh, we'll share some videos with you in which you actually see people using their body language to make their presence felt and to have a, an executive presence in a meeting.